viewers, I appreciate you wherever you're connecting from. If you're joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, I thank you very much for joining me all the time. Thank you. I appreciate you. I see your contributions on the comment section and I appreciate your contributions. Continue to contribute, say your opinion. We are all talking for peace. We are all expecting peace. What we are asking is a way for us to have a peaceful life, a way for us to be respected, to have a place we can call our home, a place we can call a nation that we can travel. That is why we are all talking about these issues, mainly issues on the contraption called Nigeria, more especially the southeastern part of Nigeria and southern Nigeria as a whole. I always talk about the issues and today I'm here once again to talk about the issue of the constitution in Nigeria. You know, most of the time you see people talking about restructuring, restructuring, restructuring. That is what some people who are denying the fact are doing and some people who are still pretending, sitting on the fence. Or some of us who have crossed that level of uh, asking for, begging for anything from that contract called Nigeria, we are asking for a breakup. A peaceful breakup that everybody will have a nation they can be proud of. That is the only lasting solution that you can be ever think about. If you are sincere to yourself, you should begin to ask for that. So many people are still pretending. So many people are still pretending. Some because of their selfish interests. Some because they are scared. Some because they want to be politically correct. They are still talking about restructuring. Talking about restructuring. Preaching about the constitution. Trying to change the constitution. Amendment constitution. All these things are lies, are things that doesn't hold water, and you and I know that it's not going to work. Who are those that are going to amend the constitution for you? Is it those people who are benefiting from it? You and I know that the people who are benefiting from this very constitution that you're talking about are the Northerners, and they are the people in power. It doesn't matter who you put there, they control everything because they have been given the power in the constitution. And there is nothing you will do on this planet as to make them change the constitution, nor make an amendment that is going to, not going to favor them. They will not accept that because they are lazy. They are lazy. The constitution that is there now supports their laziness. So you are talking about constitutional amendment or changing of constitution or whatever. These things do not hold water. Let us stop lying to ourselves. All these politicians are a bunch of liars. Bunch of liars. They will tell you to go to the Senate, the Senate will make amendments, Senate is going to change the question. In Senate, when you go to Senate, everything is being done by vote. Majority carries the vote. And you and I know that the majority in that Senate are Northerners. They are the North. They have the majority in the Senate. They have the majority in the House of Representatives. There is no way you can vote and stand your vote can stand against them. There is no way the vote of the Southerners can change anything. It wouldn't. It will not. They even have a stronghold in the South also because of religion. Some of the some of the people in the South who tend to be who tend to be to be uh, 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 Muslims, they will always down to the two of the North. Yes, they will down to the two. And there is nothing you will do to convince a Northerner to change the constitution in a way that will not favor him. No, he will not. You don't blame them. You don't blame them when they are trying to preserve them. Self-preservation is allowed. They are preserving their own. They are preserving themselves. You know, I don't even blame them for not agreeing to change the constitution. But you have to do something extraordinary for you to get what you want. If you continue to beg, you will never get it. You will never get it. Remember, this whole problem was caused by, by what do they call him, uh, Aguirre or whatever. Though the intention of Aguirre was not to change the constitution, in a, to run the constitution in a way that is going to make enslave some part of people, some other people. No, that was not the intention of Aguirre. But the constitution happened to fall into the hand of the evil man after they killed Aguirre. Then they capitalized on it, now using it in a very dangerous way to subjugate every other tribe in that very country and make every other person irrelevant. From time immemorial, we have been asking for unity. Dr. Nandiaziki we did this mistake of asking for the unity that never exists. That is one annoyance I have when we begin to talk about our founding fathers and fathers. These founding fathers we always praise and raise up our altar. They found nothing good for us. What they found for us is death, destruction, and setback. That is where we are today. I don't know why Dr. Nandaski will refuse to merge with Awolo. Instead, he was merging with the North. 
the northerners that you know very well that these people have nothing to offer. They have nothing to offer and they don't regard you. They don't take you as human. They say it in the open. You can see one of the interviews that was granted to Amadou Bello when he was alive. Yeah, he was, the way he was talking about Igbo man. The way he, the way he hated Igbo men, the way he talks about them. And when he's talking about the Igbo, he is talking about the southeastern region. Don't think when they mention Igbo, you think it's only people who speak Igbo. It is not people who speak Igbo alone. He is talking about everybody in the south, the old eastern region. That is what he's talking about. He hates you. They hate you so much. And you think these people will sit together and begin to give you constitutional amendment that is going to favor you? Or give you a restructuring that is going to favor you? It will never happen. Let us stop deceiving ourselves. You have forgotten that this very man who is in power now, this very man he is in power now, contested with this very, very, this very constitutional amendment we are talking about. He contested with restructuring. He said he is going to restructure. Even one of the pastors who is... Uh, one of the pastors who is one of the Fulani supporters initially. He was one of the people who brought this very deadly, deadly regime into office. Bakare, Tunde Bakare or whatever. I saw a video where he was talking about the way he was lecturing Muhammad Buhari about uh, restructuring. That if Muhammad Buhari says he doesn't know what is restructuring, they all know it. APC know what is restructuring. So what's your position on the restructuring of Nigeria? And he said, well, there are too many voices. We don't know what they are saying. I said, who are the day? And the first month of your administration, I brought you a compendium of what I call the legacy of Muhammad Buhari containing the restructuring of Nigeria along through federal system that we agreed upon when I chose to run with you in 2011. I brought it a second time to you. Who are the dead? So if you don't understand what restructuring is, just look back and see the Grand North Pyramids in the north. That was what financed Amadou Bello University and all the great things that Amadou Bello did in his days. If you don't understand restructuring, consider the golden era of the region. And look at what Coco did. Free education, first television, first, liber first stadium, and all the high rise and everything that I would did came from Coco from the West. If you don't understand restructuring, look back in the East and see what they did with palm oil and with coal from Udi Hills, including the investor of Nigeria, Unsuka. And anyone who does not understand restructuring, go back to the 1963 Republican Constitution and understand the evolution of power. And if you don't understand, take the document in your hand that Nasir Arufai committee put together and the 12 things that they stated. If you don't do it first, you have yourself to blame. But from every indication, it is clear they have said it openly and boldly that they are not going to restructure. Even the AGF said it, Attorney General of the Federation said it, there is no restructuring. Go to your state and restructure your state. They are not willing to do it. Is it the tanko, whatever? Is it the man that is going to do, give you restructuring? Or is it the senior president that is going to permit the restructuring discussion? And people are still pretending, pretending, sitting on the fence, out of fear, out of ignorance, or out of wickedness, or out of selfishness, asking for restructuring and amendment of constitution that will never hold water and will never ever happen. From every indication you see, there is no sign that it's going to happen anytime. And I'm going to play with you a recent video that was an interview of somebody who is one of the APC chieftain, one of the people, spokesperson of this government, what he has to say about this plan of restructuring and plan of uh, consumer amendments. What he will tell you about the presidency, that they are not interested, that he doesn't, when he was asked about their interest on this very issue, what they have in mind. I will play it for you to see what he had to say, for you to know that talking about restructuring or constitutional amendment is dead on arrival. Ask for breakup so that you can have dignity. Let us watch the video. Do we need to scrap this constitution and start all over, or we need just to amend this one? My own personal preference 
is that we should scrap this constitution and adopt the 1963 Republican Constitution. That constitution contains everything that is being agitated for now. If we had that, if we adopted it, with amendments here and there to make it um, accommodate uh, states rather than regions which we used to have, I think all these ag agitations will die down and everybody will be happy. Do you think President Buhari have the political will to make that happen? I really don't know. But this is what I will say. He was the one who commissioned, or his party, headed by him, commissioned the El Nasser um, Committee to work on the issue of federalism. And they have come out with an excellent document. I, I think what we need to do is to look at the contents of those documents and implement them. And if they are to be implemented, as I said, it will probably be better if they were implemented in a totally new um, constitution instead of trying to amend the existing one uh, since it will involve so much amendment that using it as a document in future would be very difficult. So already you can say that uh, President Buhari favors um, federalism, devolution of powers already by heading a party that has made that recommendation. But, but so why, is it, why are they not implementing what it? now? Yes, I am personally disappointed that that excellent document is being allowed to gather dust. I think the leaders of the party should now bring it out and go to the president and say we should now make a move to implement what we ourselves commissioned and have approved. Because that is what the whole country wants now. You see, Nigeria is a natural federal state. It's a country with over 300 ethnic nationalities, a country in which River State, I was hearing, uh, listening to Osi Kocha this morning, there are over six nationalities in River State. In 1950, the very first national conference Nigeria had, all the delegates from north, from south, from east, from west, declared that the only way this country could be together and function effectively would be as a federal entity. And that's what, why we now had the McPherson Constitution, then the Littleton Constitution, and then the 1960 Constitution, all sp spelling out very strong, clear federal system, giving powerful, very strong autonomy to the um, federating units, and uh, leaving the center to handle things that are only relevant at the national level, like passports, um, foreign affairs, defense, things like that, uh, currency, and so on. Most of the other things were left to the regions to handle. All right. I yes. have, uh, maybe I'm one of the few. No, let me make my point. Okay, I'm one sir. of the few uh, who have actually seen this country from beginning, virtually. When I was in secondary school, I knew nothing about the federal government. I only knew about Ibadra and Awolo. The, the region controlled my life from A to Z. I knew nothing about federal government. Everything worked perfectly, beautifully, happily. So that is what we are missing. The, the regions competed. Nigeria developed fast. The regions kept what they, they produced, sent 20% to the federal level, and then 30% to a distributable level, which was then dis distributed among the regions according to their needs. And everybody was happy. We just have to go back to that. Otherwise, uh, the Nigeria will, uh, will not enjoy stability. There will be agitations and discontent all through. We have to go back to, to that to, to pre coup situation. After watching this video, you can see it clearly that these people are not ready.
they are not ready to accept anything that you're saying. And they are not shy about it. They are not shy about it. The common language they use is that when you talk about restructuring, they say they don't know the kind of restructuring you are talking about. Is it this type or this type or that, or that type? They begin to tell you different kinds of restructuring. Once you talk about restructuring, they give you different meanings of restructuring. That is where they begin to confuse themselves. That is the, their latest strategy that they're using to confuse anybody that comes with the argument of restructuring. They just bring that up. What type are you talking about? As if they are talking to clowns and fools. The other day, the other fool that called himself a uh, 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 Yaya Bello came out who said he's going to contest in 2023. Well, the way he was talking about the restructuring, that has nothing like restructuring of... Uh, 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 the way he, talks, he was talking in his interview, you will see that the APC government, the North, the Fulanese are not ready for any sort of discussion. They are not ready. Some time ago, they presented and said that when the pressure was a little bit high, when the pressure was high, they presented and said that they formed uh, they form whatever they, a committee to look into restructuring, headed by the the, 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 the devil in the Kaduna. After that committee did all what they did, did you see any outcome? Did they make any move to today? They only make that committee for the situation to come down. And when they started that committee, the situation died down, died down. The pressure wasn't high anymore. There was no conferences anymore attacking them. And it ended. And this is how they will continue to manipulate people, manipulate people until they shift to their plan of 2023. Wake up. Wake up and ask the right question and make the right demand. The right demands to make now is to ask for disintegration. Ask for breakup. Ask for a peaceful breakup referendum. That is the next question to ask. By the way, even if you want the constitutional uh, amendment or you want to, uh, uh, you want what do you call it? The, what do you call uh, uh, whatever you say you want? Why don't you allow people to make their choice? Why must few people be deciding on what happens and what does not happen? Few people cannot come out and tell us that the country wants restructuring. Just come out and tell us that the country wants uh, constitutional amendment. Why don't you put that into a referendum? Those who want. Uh, break up those who want uh, constitutional amendment, those who want to go their separate ways, those who want uh, restructuring. Put it on referendum and let people vote. And let people decide their fate. Why are you forcing people, people to take on that? Why don't you put it on referendum? Let people vote and choose what they want. Why do few people have to come out to decide for the majority? When the loud voice we are hearing from the southwest today say they want to do a nation. Watch the you do watch a uh, Sunday the last rally rally in a, in, a, in, a, in Undo. If you have not watched the rally, go and watch Sunday Ibuwo last rally. It's Undo. It was a massive rally. The whole Undo was outside. Road was blocked. When you talk about mammoth crowd, that was a mammoth crowd. There was no space anywhere. These are people who want Ududu nation. I bet you the whole Yoruba land are wanting, they are looking for Ududu nation, not restructuring. Don't mind the few people that come together and begin to make their demand, just like they are doing in the Southeast. You see governors and politicians come together to say they are talking about restructuring. In the Southeast, what we need is a breakup. We need our own nation, Biafra. We need a referendum. That is what the Southeast needs. The same thing with Southwest now, what they need is a referendum, not any restructuring or whatever you are talking about. It is very clear. Let's stop the pretense. Stop sitting in defense. The South, come out and make your demand openly. Stop sitting in defense. Let the South and stop talking about this restructuring and constitutional amendment. That is a deceit. It's a deceit. Talking about constitutional amendment is a deceit. It's a diversion. Stop talking about constitutional amendment and stop talking about restructuring. All those are diversions. They are diversion and they will never have an answer and will never lead you anywhere. They will never ever lead you anywhere. It doesn't matter how you pretend. If you continue asking for restructuring and constitutional amendment, the killing will continue. The killing will continue. People will continue to lose their life and lose their land. The only best way to end everything and start everything afresh is break up. Or do go their separate ways, Biafra go their separate ways, Middle Bay go their separate ways, Arewa go their separate ways. First of all, deal with our problem. 
Later on, if we want to come back and march together, so be it. If we don't want to, everybody stay on their own. We can do business together, we can intermarry, we can have friendship, we can do everything respectfully with each other. We can travel to each zone respectfully, knowing fully well the law that exists in that area. That is what we are asking for. A sensible environment where sensible people live. We do not need a contraption where animals live. We don't need a zoo. We are humans. We are humans. We are not animals. That is why we are adding, asking for the end of this contraption so that we can be able to have a place where human beings will respect it. We are not talking out of hate. We are talking out of love because we love. Even the Northerners, we love the Northerners, we love the Arewas. A lot of them are losing their life. The poor masses in Arewa are losing their life. And the government is doing nothing about it. It has to stop. And it can only stop when you go back to your region and concentrate on your region. Deal with the problem that is facing you instead of looking elsewhere. What we are asking is for a breakup, a peaceful breakup, referendum for everybody to have their voice heard. Thank you so much for watching. If you have other contribution to make, go to the comment section and make a contribution. Say it the way you feel it. It's all welcome. Thank you so much. If you are not subscribed, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you.